My name is Boyan Tamburic. I'm a final year PhD student and I work for the Solar Hydrogen Project, which is part of the Energy Futures Lab. Renewable energy is key because we're facing two big challenges in the world today. We call it the Global Energy Challenge. The first part of the challenge is that the demand for energy is glo growing globally and we need new technologies that are going to satisfy this demand, particularly from developing countries such as China and India. And the second issue is that the world is reliant on fossil fuels as its source of energy. And fossil fuels are responsible for greenhouse gas emissions, which can be linked to the climate change. The aim of the Solar Hydrogen Project is to produce hydrogen, which we believe will be the sustainable fuel of the future. Uh, from natural resources, so by a clean and renewable process. There are two ways in which uh, green algal hydrogen production can help to reduce greenhouse emissions. Um, the first is that we're producing hydrogen, which is a very clean fuel. So once we've produced the hydrogen, then the oxidation of hydrogen produces only water and heat as the two byproducts. Therefore, no carbon dioxide emissions from the hydrogen fuel. One problem with the way hydrogen is produced at the moment is it's typically produced from the gasification of coal or the steam reforming of methane, which are processes that emit carbon dioxide. This is a completely clean and renewable process with no carbon in the system whatsoever. So one of the interesting challenges of green algal hydrogen production is the hydrogenase enzyme itself, this natural catalyst, because it's inactivated in the presence of oxygen. oxygen. So you need an anaerobic system in order to attain hydrogen production. And we have a very clever method of reaching anaerobic conditions. So the algae require four key nutrients for growth. Those are carbon, nitrogen, nitrogen phosphorus, and sulfur. And what we do is we deny the algae sulfur. This reduces the amount of photosynthesis. This damages the algal photosynthetic mechanism. So it reduces the amount of oxygen they're producing by photosynthesis. Yet the rate of respiration remains the same. And respiration encourages oxygen consumption. So as we deny the algae sulfur, they basically use up all their own oxygen in the system by a metabolic process and bring themselves into an anaerobic state, at which point hydrogen production can commence. So there are many strains of Chlamydomonas reinhardtii. We're using a strain that's specific to the UK. And the great thing about green algae, as opposed to, for example, photovoltaics, is that they do not need an incredible amount of sunlight. So they will grow and produce hydrogen without any problems on a typical day in the UK, typical cloudy day, simply because they're naturally adapted to, they're naturally suited to these conditions. There also exist other strains of Chlamydomonas that might be more applicable to different environments. For example, there are marine strains that can be grown uh, on the seas. There are also desert strains that need more sunlight but will then produce more hydrogen. There are two possible ways that this technology can be used in the future. Um, one way is to look at large-scale hydrogen production, so massive algal plants in the desert, perhaps in enclosed ponds, huge scales, thousands and thousands of liters. The other idea, which I think is actually more interesting and more applicable to the UK, is microgeneration of hydrogen. So the algal cells could be placed on the roofs of buildings or even integrated into the structure of buildings, and hydrogen could be produced on site, and this hydrogen could then be used to power one's own hydrogen vehicle, one's own fuel cell vehicle.